Hi, my name is Dr. Ben Newman. I'm a coronavirus researcher and I uh, read a lot of coronavirus papers. Let's, but I don't like them all. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, finding some answers to your questions if the answer is out there. So our first question today is from Karen. And how are you doing, Karen? Yeah. Okay, so Karen's question. I suffer from varicose veins. Fine. Yeah, a lot of people do. Yeah. Um, and I'm slightly concerned about the AstraZeneca vaccine. The fact some countries have stopped the vaccine being given due to concerns about blood clots. Right. So you're worried about uh, deep vein thrombosis or something like that. Um, which is something that weirdly I think has a much higher media profile in the UK than the US. Yeah, it's, people are still just people, but whatever, you know, different people fixate on different things. Yeah. Um, glad to hear you're doing fine though anyway. Uh, what reassurance can I be given that this vaccine is safe for me? Yeah, it's a good question. That's one that a lot of people have. Um, there was a, so up until this point, it has been mostly just talk saying that there are a few people uh, who got the vaccine and at some point after getting the vaccine, then went on to develop a particular type of um, blood clot. So the type that we're talking about has a fancy name that we don't need to have, but what it means is that you'll have little blood clots throughout the body um, and you will have very low numbers of platelets. So platelets are little tiny cells that um, actually do the blood clotting process. They're gonna help activate uh, blood clots. So it's like a platelet depletion or a massive platelet activation uh, kind of thing. This is something that happens in regular people at a certain low rate and it's something that happens in vaccinated people and so the new paper that's come out which i think is over on research square and i've got the title here a pro oh my gosh a prothrombotic thrombocytopenic disorder resembling heparin induced thrombocytopenia following coronavirus 19 coronavirus 19 vaccination yeah that's dumb you, you don't have to spell out covid 19. <laughs> And if you do spell it out, it's got disease at the end. That's what the D is. Uh, There's no D in coronavirus. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, this paper is one that's been making the rounds lately. And it lays out some fairly sensible, very standard data. Um, these are the people. And I think in most of these cases, it was between one and two weeks after vaccination that they noticed something. Um, the Thing that they didn't do in the paper so what it is is a case history of those people what it is not is a comparison so there are a lot of people in the world some of them have coagulation problems some of them have varicose veins some of them have all these other things and now we're at a time and a place where all those people are getting vaccines because everybody's getting vaccines and then even if something was already on the way, if something was going to happen after they've got a vaccine, now we take a really close look at it to make sure it's not, you know, the vaccine is actually causing this to happen. Um, the paper comes to the conclusion right down at the bottom, which is that um, um, the vaccine is associated with uh, this particular prothrombotic disorder. They didn't show that though in the paper. <laughs> To actually show that, what you would need to do is show that, like look for this using the same careful techniques in the population at large or some subset of the population at large. Um, and look maybe in the families of these people. Some of these things are heritable and then compare like, was this a person who had no pre-existing predis predisposition to blood clots? Or was it someone who was likely to get blood clots? So some of the people in the study actually had other clotting disorders. Um, and yeah, <laughs> uh, that right there suggests to me that there's probably an underlying condition behind this. And I guess whether or not it can be set off by the vaccine, I don't think there's any real chance it's caused by the vaccine. But what you see with some vaccines, some new treatments, is that if there's something that was already wrong but was kind of in the background to the point where you didn't notice, then all of a sudden you get vaccinated and uh, yeah, then this thing shows up. An example of this was with a rotavirus vaccine a couple of years ago. I think it was Rotavax. It might have been Rotavrix. I can't remember. Um, anyway, what they found was that very rarely uh, children were getting this um, and very few 
we're getting a particular disease called intussusception where one part of the intestine basically like turns inward and folds up on itself and so you get a pouch where it was normally just a tube it's like folded up a little bit the closed off pouch can get inflamed and there's basically no way out it's like having an appendicitis kind of but it's in the intestine not the appendix yeah um they then after they had to pull the vaccine even though it was a disease that was killing a lot of people and a vaccine that was pretty effective at stopping them they then went on to figure out that most of the people that were getting both the vaccine side effect were premature babies and so it looks as though uh, premature birth was the thing that was associated with this particular side effect and so it's probably just a case of them looking for and trying to find what is the one rare thing that these particular people have in common that other people don't have um so the paper doesn't show at least to my um uh view um that there's any real association between these but it might be leaving a couple of breadcrumbs that eventually point the way and i think what it's suggesting reading between the lines is that uh, people with coagulation problems uh, may be more susceptible to having coagulation problems after vaccination and so that's something that could be looked at and there are anticoagulants that could be given uh, to those people at the same time as a vaccine which would probably go a long way toward fixing the problem uh, if that is the problem so First, they got to figure out what their problem is, then they got to fix it, but it's going to be a rare thing. And um, yeah, I don't think on the whole, um, and not medical advice, once again, I, I don't see a strong association from this paper or the other things that I've read on this particular subject that says that you particularly would be at higher risk or would need to worry. Um, varicose veins are pretty common and this vaccine has been tried out i mean they're more common with age and this vaccine has been tried out on older people around the world more than on anybody else the <laughs> the elderly are probably more vaccinated against this thing than anybody else and that problem hasn't really materialized so i would say based on that and based on uh the uh the, some of the preconditions in this particular study it suggests to me that you would probably already know you had some kind of clotting disorder and not a varicose vein disorder. And that would be a reason to talk to your doctor about what you could do to perhaps mitigate the side effects so that you could still get vaccinated. Because everything that is a risk factor that would make people not want to get vaccinated, as far as I'm aware, is also a much bigger risk factor that would make you way more likely to have terrible side effects if you do get affected. Uh, infected so yeah as far as I as far as I can see from what I'm reading it's still a pretty good idea for everybody to get vaccinated um, but if there are specific cases then yeah that's where you talk to a doctor and figure out well what can I do if this is the particular side effect that may be coming and there are things that uh, yeah can be done for most of these so there you go maybe more of an answer than you needed or wanted um, and somebody told me I need to nest, that my background is too bare. I, I think they're right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, all. I hope you continue to do well. And um, yeah, best wishes to you. Uh, this has been Ask Dr. Ben.